This video will discuss the concept of the nuclear magnetic resonance spectrometer. So in the previous videos, we showed that there is a value called the nuclear magneton for a given nucleus called beta n, which is equal to the charge of that nucleus divided by 2 times its mass. We have the magnetogyric ratio, which relates the magnetic dipole of a given nucleus to its angular momentum which is equal to a fa value called the nuclear factor, Gn, times the nuclear magneton, beta n. And this uh, nuclear factor is generally some integer. And we have the frequency at which the two states, uh, the difference in energy in a magnetic field between having a spin up and a spin down nucleus results in uh, a, a resonance frequency where a photon is absorbed to go between the energy levels of those two states is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the magnetogyric ratio times the z component of the magnetic field that our nucleus is in. So as I mentioned, this value nu is called the resonance frequency. That is the frequency of the photon that we absorb to go between the alpha and beta spin up and spin down states of our nucleus. And that that frequency we can see is proportional to the external magnetic field in the z direction specifically. So if we want to get a spectrum for this, uh, for a particular nucleus or a particular set of nuclei, we can do one of two things. We can either fix the frequency and vary the magnetic field, or we can fix the magnetic field and vary the frequency. Because what we're looking to do eventually is to have some spectrum here where for example all of the all of the protons all of the hydrogen nuclei in a given sample will show up what is their resonance frequency and right now for all we know uh, they all look the same because all of our hydrogen nuclei have the same charge mass and nuclear factor and they'll be in the same magnetic field but in future videos we'll see that there are some uh, local factors that cause these values to be very slightly different from one another. So we want to find what are all the frequencies at which the all of the hydrogen one nuclei have resonances in a given sample. And that's like a uh, that's like a footprint or a fingerprint for a given molecule in a sample. Okay, so as I mentioned, we can either fix the frequency and vary the magnetic field, or we can fix the magnetic field and vary the frequency. So it turns out that the more common approach is to have a fixed frequency for your spectrometer, usually measured in megahertz, because these are in the radio region, in the radio frequency domain of the electromagnetic spectrum. And frequent NMR machines that you'll see are have things uh, have frequencies of 60 megahertz, 90, 250, 300, 400, 500, 700, or even 1,000 megahertz which would be one gigahertz. And then there's going to be a reference that we're typically going to use for this uh, standard frequency here, which is going to be called tetramethylsilane, the molecule Si with four methyl groups, SiCH34. And it's generally preferred to be that reference frequency to give us uh, what frequency it, it reacts at, or what frequency it undergoes resonance at, because it's non-reactive so it's not going to disappear in the sample. It has a strong signal because you have 12 protons in the molecule. All of them are chemically equivalent. And it's what we'll see in future videos is called highly shielded in that there's a lot of uh, electron density around it, so it's not, uh, su it's not subject to uh, a lot of uh, external environmental factors of what's nearby. It's going to give a pretty consistent signal for what, it, for what fr resonance frequency it'll have. So as with most type of spectroscopic devices, we have some type of source where photons are going to be coming from. In this case, uh, photons in the radio frequency, so some kind of radio frequency generator. That's going to go through a sample, and our sample is going to be in some magnetic field so as to generate our magnetic field and make our resonance frequency something other than zero, because without a magnetic field, this resonance frequency would just be zero. So a strong enough magnetic field to generate a significant resonance frequency so that we can interact with these photons and detect 
uh, how we are absorbing those, and then output that as a spectrum as we vary whatever magnetic field our sample is experiencing. So that's the basics of NMR. We're going to look now in future videos of what causes different individual nuclei to undergo resonance at slightly different frequencies uh, for absorbing the radiation to, tra uh, to transfer between these two energy levels.